Hi there. My name is Merete, uh, and on Ravelry and Instagram, my name is Merete K Design. And uh, today I want to share a video about my design uh, I'm wearing. This is the Asylum uh, Bumper Jacket. And uh, yeah, it's uh, fresh off the needles and I'm super happy about the way it turned out. And, uh, and uh, I'm super excited that the pattern is going to uh, be shared with you. Actually, the design is uh, from 2020. Uh, the original design is behind me. Um, and for like ever since I tried to uh, release it, but I've struggled uh, a lot with the grading and everything. Uh, I have posted another video about my disabilities and uh, why my patterns are designed like they are and um, this video is more about this design and how you're able to adjust the size to your own liking. Um, the pattern comes out in one size and uh, I give a lot of uh, modifications um, uh, guidelines to uh, how to resize the bumper jacket um, and you may notice that the neckline is a bit different from the original one and that is one of the big difference from uh, the uh, being able to publish this pattern. So I'm super excited that it's finally happening. <laughs> I'm so proud of this design. Uh, I can just step back a bit so you can see it in its full version. It's a bumper jacket and it's a modular uh, knitting and there is a lot of intarsia built in. Just gonna turn around so you can see the back. Uh, yeah, and it's really interesting uh, the way it's knitted, but it's not hard. So, um, so I will uh, walk you through in a minute how uh, it's knitted and also how you modify it. Um, so I just want to show you it in the full size and on a body first. There's a zipper in it, so I can open it and wear it loose. And it's not um, uh, steeped, I don't cut in it, so I can't figure out how to do that yet. So <laughs> for now, it's really easy. You don't have to be able to knit in your, or cut in your knitting. Uh, the Asylum Bomber Jagger is inspired from the Moroccan um, Asylum Rocks. And if you're not uh, familiar, familiar with them, um, I remember... <laughs> Sorry, my English is bad today, I guess. <laughs> um, but I recommend um, that you go and look up the uh, Asylum Rocks on the internet or Instagram and look how they are. They are really beautiful uh, rocks that usually are um, on a white background and with a lot of squares and zigzags and also a lot of uh, neon colors in them. And uh, as this was an original one, you can kind of see how that comes out with the uh, white bottom and the neon stripes in between. I can also show you the back, you haven't seen that. Um, and all the zigzags, uh, this one doesn't look like a rock, but it's inspired from it. So, yes. Um, so let me uh, walk you through uh, how this pattern is knitted and how you can customize the size. Here the Asylum Bomber Jagger is, is lying on a table. Um, it's a very uh, flat construction, so it makes sense to show it like this. Um, the uh, Bomber Jagger is knitted uh, in, <coughs> in different sections. And the first section you uh, knit is uh, these uh, three um, 
squares. And um, this two squares has the heights that is uh, most used um, for uh, bodies or for women bodies. And so um, I have made the pattern so these are not modified, they are always the same size. Um, the pattern includes instructions for making one more square or how many squares you want to make. So you're actually able to make a more like a long cardigan uh, or a men men's size uh, bomber jacket if you want the longer body. Uh, the customization comes in the upper square and as you can see this square kind of goes out into the sleeve. So what this square needs to be in heights is actually the same as like your upper um, arm measurements. Um, the pattern includes the size for this one and, um, and also a lot of measurements so you can always uh, look into those measurements and see how they fit you. This size is um, a size medium um, and it is very wide as you can see uh, so you may not have to change the width of it um, but it's also a possibility. But first of all you need this uh, green section and what's fun about this section is that you can uh, add these small intarsia diamonds into this uh, part and you can place as many in, in uh, uh, diamonds as you like, uh, you can make them the size you want. In this uh, version I put some glitter into them, see that? I just uh, used a strand of uh, glitter yarn that I knitted together uh, with the yarn. Um, so uh, in the original version I put it uh, some diamonds like opposite of each other, so that's also an option. Uh, so this first uh, section is really fun and you're able to play uh, with intarsia and different diamond squares. And as you knit this, and it's always the same for all sizes, um, it's first here when you get to this part where you make decisions on you want to make this square smaller and then you will actually get a smaller height and a smaller sleeve or you want to make it uh, bigger. See how if it was bigger, oh <laughs> I have to find my fingers in the camera, if you make it bigger you would also uh, get these chevrons bigger. So when you're done with this first section, you pick up stitches along the edge here and uh, then you knit chevrons out here. And uh, as you knit, there are some neck shaping and these neck shaping are all the same for all sizes. So all sizes will end with the same neckline, size of neckline, and I'll talk about the neckline in a moment. So you continue knit out to here, these stripes here, and then you put this side on hold and you do the same for the other side. And now you do this kind of the same for the front. So I'll just turn this around. And as you can see already now, the center panel here, the uh, intarsia diamonds are a different size. I chose a different size for the front. You could also choose diff three different colors. That's up to you. Um, again, you need two center, uh, two center front panels, one for um, the left and one for the right side. And you do the same as on the back with picking up stitches and knitting this way. This time though, the neckline is a bit different in its shape, uh, but it's also the same for all sizes. So 
all sizes and with the same size here. But of course, if you have knitted a bigger square on the back, you I instruct you to uh, write down how many stitches you have on the uh, longest uh, row. And then on the front side, you need half those stitches plus one. So actually you are kind of copying the back side and I instruct exactly when to stop because you stop a bit earlier on the square on the front to get a neckline that is more uh, going down on, on you on the front. So you stop here, you are finished with the front pieces and the back piece and now they're all joined together. They join together in the neckline. So you begin by picking up stitches. Let me see. So you start here and you use the neon color and you pick up stitches all the way around and go back. And in the neckline section, there is described um, different modifications uh, options. Like if you want a larger neck neckline, you may just make an eye cord an even small neckline, you uh, can do the ribbing. So in the neckline, you just make decisions on how big your neckline you want. And if you, for some reason, uh, find out a little later that uh, it's not uh, good enough, the size, you can always redo it. You just have to redo it before you do the eye cord etching here on the front. But now the pieces are joined and you're able to try it on as you knit it. So uh, you pick a side and you continue by knitting all the stitches from one side and then because you joined in the neckline you knit across here and continue over to the back. And so you knit back and forth in share runs. I'll talk in a minute about um, these uh, intarsia uh, moments here and how colors are placed. So you continue over the shoulders and now at the shoulders there are decreases. So you can kind of see how the shoulders uh, slope down here. Um, so you get a big uh, or a bit of shaping over your shoulders. You end the body here and if you need, well actually if you need a smaller size you will all already at this point be instructed to uh, decide if you want it smaller in, in the circumference and if you want it bigger then you should continue making it more width and all sizes, the same instructions are this, uh, they are the same instructions for this side panel section, because these are all the same. In in uh, for all sizes, this panel instruction is also the same. In a moment, I will talk about that because at this point, where if you decide to make it larger, you need to make into consideration that the fabric is coming off the shoulders and hence you're kind of starting the sleeves. So if you're making it wider, you need to knit this part from the sleeve instructions and this part from the body instructions. So you need to keep two sets of instructions in mind. Also here on the sleeves, you are making decreases to the bottom. The pattern includes how you figure out the amount of decreases you are going to make and also where to place them. This sleeve is extra long. I have very long arms, so I have added this extra stripe as an optional version. You can decide to stop it here and end. The sleeves. The side panel is a knitted on panel 
that join the front and back side with each other. So when you finish the sleeves, you cast on a set of stitches up here and they are not joined to the sleeve yet. They are just open, cast on if you might say. And then you knit with decreases and increases, just like the center panels and joining as you go all the way down. The side panels are the same and the same for all sizes. I think I mentioned that. The finishing of the sweater is sewing the side panels together with the sleeve. And as you can see, one side of the side panel is joined with the one side of the sleeve and joined the other half is joined to the other side of the sleeve. And you need to be aware that you don't sew the sleeve together all the way up here because then you don't know where to do with the panel. So start by seaming this together with the side panel, side panel and then continue seaming together the bottom of the sleeve. What I probably didn't mention is that the sleeve is knitted in, in across here, just like the body. So there's no seaming here at all. Yes. Sorry for the shadow. Um, the bottom, there's a fixed or the same instruction for picking up stitches, no matter what size you do. So there's no customization there. And uh, you do edge wrist that rip for a nice finishing. And uh, you do end by doing an I-cord bind off here on the front and on the sleeves. So this is the modifying options of the bumper jacket. Uh, the color options are here. Um, there is a lot of mo uh, options for playing with colors. Um, you can use just a few color colors and you can do a lot. In uh, the uh, pattern is included um, three main colors, which is a light MC, um, light main color, it's a dark main color, and it's a neon main color, this one. And these colors are not used for Intarsia at all only here on the diamonds. But here on the large sex sex sections with chevrons, you don't make uh, intarsia with the uh, main colors. The main colors are used to separate the CC colors. And there are different separations. Uh, here is a dark one with a neon, then two stripes of CC colors, then there are a main uh, color light, a main color neon, and a main color dark that separates another CC row. So these are all called CC row. And as you can see, there are three CCs here, or contrast colors. Um, and I call those for uh, broken intarsia rows. So it's uh, three contrast colors, but they are broken with intarsia here in the bottom of the chevrons. And these uh, instructions are all added as uh, optional intarsia. So if you're not uh, familiar with uh, intarsia or they scare you, you can just skip them and make like a CC stripe that is not broken and skip the intarsia. And then same here, actually, you can also skip these diamonds in the beginning if they scare you. And actually, I'm thinking about doing like a three colored version at one point that will have a lot of contrast and where there will be no uh, intarsia except maybe for these small diamonds. Quite fond of those. 
Um, but that could be fun and maybe make one that is longer. So that's also an option. I have uh, nine uh, contrast colors in this uh, version. Um, you can use more or less, uh, but nine colors works where you have um, only one ball of most of the colors and two balls of some of them. Also, you can see that in some parts, I have added glitter yarn again. Let's see if I can catch it. Just to have a bit of fun. So, what you need to know is there's always two C or contrast color stripes and then some separation two contrast color stripes and some kind of separation and that continues all the time and in the sleeves you can see there is also added these diamonds the color placement is there are guidelines for that this part on the front is an exact match of the back just the opposite side so again, let's see, that is an exact match. And again, if I turned the other side, this side is an exact match of the opposite side here. And the same is for the sleeves. So there is a guide to how to place the colors. If you are freaking out because there are so many colors, then just tone it down, choose less. Um, it will look really pretty also in a simple version. Yes, that is uh, all I have to tell about the grading. Um, yes. I hope you uh, enjoyed that walkthrough of the Asylum Bomber Jacket and I hope uh, my explana explanations were understandable. Um, I also hope that you uh, see that it's a really fun construction uh, constructed and that it's also uh, modifiable. Uh, the uh, original version I just wanted to show you the uh, diamonds that I was talking about that were a little off center in this version and there was also some sequences in this diamond to make it pop so there's a lot of options to making uh, your own uh, fun diamonds in this bomber jacket the yarn used is uh, Peruvian Highland wool, um, 100 meters per 50 gram, and I use a 4.5 millimeter needle. Um, it's a thicker yarn and the gauge is also a bit tight, but that's kind of how it makes a jacket. Um, uh, Peruvian Highland wool can be found uh, in many different brands. And um, I have listed in uh, the pattern what kind of brands you could go for, but maybe you have some in your country that is also available. It's not super washed also, I should mention that. So it's more um, woolly and warm uh, than a super washed yarn. Yes, I think that was all. Only want to mention that in uh, the below I will link to uh, the pattern in, on Ravelry and I will also link to the uh, video where I tell about my um, pattern writing disabilities. So if you are interested in, in understanding the background for why it's only in one size and why I talk about all this, um, you can find it there. I hope this uh, in some way can assist uh, in uh, easier at, uh, accessing the pattern and, and going to knit it. I'm not dotting, done knitting it. Um, I usually uh, return to a pattern if I really like it. So, uh, and I already have ideas for one or two or three more of this uh, designs. So um, I will be knitting it again. So maybe we will be knitting it together uh, at one point. Um, 
So uh, I will leave you out for today. Have a really nice day and thank you for watching this. It really means a lot to me. And also thank you for any uh, compliments you may have on it. That also means a lot to me. And I'm just super excited that this design is finally coming out into the world and that you and everybody can um, feel that they are able to enjoy it as well as me. So yes, that's all. Have a nice day. Bye bye.